Nice. Okay, come on now. Oh, some good damage here. Some good damage to be had. Hello and welcome back to our Sturgeon Viking. And, well, what Viking is complete without having a set of axes to use? Now, of course, I don't think I'm going to be using any kind of throwing axes or anything like that, even though that would probably still be very much in keeping with the theme. However, I am going to be crafting a two-handed and indeed a one-handed axe as well, because that will definitely suit our needs for close combat as well as for slightly longer reaching combat. So, as you can see here, I have have made an axe. Unfortunately, I've made a couple of these and they haven't really turned out as I desired. I actually wanted to get a little bit more swing speed here and there, but unfortunately that doesn't seem to be the case. So I've tried to balance it as best as I can for weapon reach and swing speed. As you can no doubt see on the right side of the screen there, I only have a tier three axe head, unfortunately. So hopefully I'll be able to get something a little better as we progress and indeed smelt a couple more things and discover more stuff. And then we, maybe we can make a better one. So I'm going to be calling this Frost Chopper. Hmm, yes, what a wonderful name that is. Ah, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay, so that's the two-handed axe that we'll be using. We have quite a bit more choice for the one-handed, but now bear in mind, I want a very long reach for the one-handed because otherwise I'm going to get outranged by swords almost all the time, and I hate that. So I'm going to try my very best to get something relatively good. You're going to need something like this, for example, a spiked battle axe blade or something like that to really deal the damage. Uh, little, little snowfall. There we go. You know, something frosty, but uh, not as dangerous as Frost Chopper. Perfect idea. All right, so I did actually buy a two-handed axe. Okay, maybe we can unlock a new part. And what did we get? Oh, we actually unlocked a Great Sparth Axe Head. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's a tier two. Oh, okay, so it's a tier two axe head. Not entirely sure if I agree on that. I personally like this one much more that I used already. So I think I'm gonna basically just stick with what I have. And you can see here that all of my crafted two-handed axes, even though they are basically the worst thing in the world, obviously I can only do so much with the current stats um, that I have available to me. And you can see here that Ice Slasher does 120 swing damage. This does 113. But obviously, thematically, we want to be using an axe. And you are 100% correct about that. So let me see if I can, uh, where's little, there it is. There's a little snowfall, I'm gonna use that instead of the other thing. Ooh, that looks pretty cool. Oh, although the, bl <laughs> the blade looks really bad, doesn't it? I'd like to test out my new weapons. This axe does not seem very dangerous. I think I've called it a, a very appropriate name as a result of that. Oh, this is actually a one-handed slash two-handed weapon. Or is it just a one-handed? Are you serious? Look at this, I'm using it. Wait a minute. Ah, there we go. I can change the stance. Okay, so yeah, there we go. So if you don't know, in Bannerlord, basically what happens is you have a stance and you can utilize it however you so desire, especially with various weapons. So if you have no shield and you have a one-hand slash two-handed weapon, you're gonna be able to decide what kind of stance you want. Uh, <laughs> yes, everyone's dying before I can even get there. Okay. Ooh, nice. Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. So now let's try out our uh, let's try out our one-handed because I'm going to need to block a couple of things here. Ooh, no. Oh no. Uh, not bad. Oh, he's dead. I would very much like to have a two-handed axe that is completely just two-handed. As you can see, I did not realize the tag that it had was two-handed slash one-handed. That's why it surprised me a little bit. I'll sell my old helm, and we're going to pay 23000 for that, but I think that's kind of nice and balanced. Oh, look at this. We're actually going to get an axe. Okay, this would be a pretty good time for us to check out a comparison. Unfortunately, um, I'm using a pole arm here, and I am kind of damaged. Nice, and there we go. Easy kill, and we leveled up our pole arm skill to 25. Okay. This is bad. Ah, nice. Okay. Whew. Okay. So I think I should be automatically through because I am now the last one standing apart from the other guy. So we should be okay. It's a Sturgeon Shock Troop, which is going to be very... Ooh, never mind. I, I was actually going to say, it's going to be very difficult for us to defeat that guy. Ooh, there we go. Okay, phew. Oh, we've got a one-handed axe, nice. I actually like this axe much more than the one I was using. What? <laughs> 
much more than the one that I had actually created myself. Ah, lovely. Isn't that always the case? Okay, so we gained a Northern Simple Battle Axe. Let's actually go into the trade screen and see exactly how good or how bad that is in comparison to what I have. Okay, so there it is. Northern Simple Battle Axe. So it might make sense for me to smelt this one down and then maybe use that axe head in something that I create myself. In my opinion, it doesn't really look that cool and I don't really like it that much. So we're gonna maybe decide on something a little bit different. Generally, I would much prefer to have something like this. I think this looks really deadly. Yeah, I can smelt this down for two new parts. It might actually work quite nicely for us. Okay, let's try it out, shall we? Okay, so this is not really gonna increase its damage that much, as you can see. It's not really gonna change anything, to be honest about it. So let's just make it a little bit smaller so that we can have more swing speed, and then we can decide on the grip. Yeah, 71 reach, I think is probably pretty decent for an ax, and we'll go for something like that. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna call it um, something a little bit better this time. So what about slashing snow? Ah, smo, there we go, yes. Slashing snow, okay. Fantastic. I am very good at naming these, by the way. Oh, yes. You, you are marveling at my wondrous attempts at um, naming. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. And who do we have here? We potentially have our future husband. See whether we can make this work. Let's actually just speak to him and make sure that he is indeed not married. No, there we go. Okay, thankfully he is not. And uh, thanks to those of you in the comments that actually did give me some additional information on uh, potential suitors that we might want to pursue in some way or another. My lord, I note that you have not yet taken a wife. Oh yes, perhaps you and I. You're straightforward. I like that. We meet from time to time, as is the custom, to see if we are right for each other. I hope to see you again soon. Having a low charm skill and trying to persuade a potential spouse to join you, that's going to be kind of hard. And we're going to take a look. Okay, increase your damage with pole arms, increase your damage with pole arms while mounted. Probably going to go for pikemen because generally I'm not going to be using a mount. And then athletics, this is going to be very important. While on foot, your weapon handling is increased by 10%. Foot trips in your formation give 10% increased weapon handling for themselves. Decreases your armor weight by 30%. That means you're going to be moving around a lot faster. I actually like this more. I'm going to go for the armor weight. I think we're going to go for staunch defender. 20 morale when defending is definitely something I prefer. I do not care either way, I guess, uh, caravans, because we have a huge amount of caravans up and running at the moment. Oh, okay. So apparently I'm already able to speak to him and, oh, game crash. Ah, it seems I found out exactly what the issue was. Yes, it is indeed a mod by the name of, well, basically less brutal persuasions. And uh, basically what that means is it just makes persuasion a little bit more realistic in relation to your charm skill. Because if you have a high charm, it makes sense that you're actually gonna be good at it instead of it just being down to some random roll of the dice. I have now disabled that, so we are completely on the base game persuasion system now, and this is probably not going to work very well at all. Okay, good success already. I, as you can see, I have nothing highlighted in green here. Oh, this one's actually gonna work. Nice, okay, good charm, good charm right there. And, oh, 93? Or we can go for the green. I'm going to go for the 93, though. Nice. That was a good success. Okay, I was really worried there for a second. Okay, so it seems we have a fair amount in common, he says. But perhaps we can talk more when we meet again. All right, so I was anxiously waiting to speak to him again. And uh, hopefully we will have a good resolution here, too. Perhaps we should discuss a future together. We only need to succeed with... Oh, dear. Ah, uh, this is probably not going to work. We only need to succeed with two options. Try it. Oh, 57% chance. That was a little bit too close for my liking. Maybe we have a little bit of a better chance here. Okay, 57% chance or a potential critical critical success. I don't know. Oh, we did it. Okay, going with the green option. Definitely a good idea. Amusingly enough, um, Ulrich Scala Castle is right here. And I actually went over here and um, interacted with the castle just to update the encyclopedia. Because if you don't know, you need to interact with a potential thing or object on the world map to be able to update the encyclopedia. And so I did that. And then, <laughs> hilariously enough, it said that it was two days ago that he was at the castle and he is now at Sionan. All right, so we have a bit of a problem here, as you can no doubt tell. We have a very, very large army of the Batanians coming in to our main territory. This is actually really deep in Sturgeon territory, and I'm kind of surprised that they are being so audacious about this. There's Lek. Lek, do not get killed, sir. Do not get killed. Okay, let me actually just take a quick look at what they have here, because if they have something that we might be able to fight, then... 
who knows, maybe we'll be able to tackle them. But you can see here, the best troops that I have are literally just tier five, and that is pretty much it. Everything else is tier four and below. And I do have a couple of Sturgeon recruits here, of course, that I can indeed upgrade, but these guys are literally not going to be that useful at all. Ah, but first we might want to do a little bit of interception. As you can see right here, we do have this fellow and I think we could probably do quite nicely against him. So let's see if we can do that. I'd like to try to get Melodia to run away. Ah, didn't really want that to happen. The tents, did you see the tents moving like no one's business? Oh wow, they actually went right in there. Oh, look at how slow that is, literally because of the speed penalty from it being a two-handed and you trying to swing it as a one-handed weapon. That is crazy. Anyway, I'm just going to tell my infantry to charge in here. We are in a massive conglomeration of just, well, everything. Look at how many units we have here. Most of these guys do not have shields, though, so I can highly assume that we are literally going to take many many casualties. I'm hopeful that I will be able to level up my one-handed weapon proficiency here. Anytime I can get that up, that is definitely going to be a good thing because I've noticed that when I enter a duel, my weapon speed is significantly slower than that of the opponent. So I'm trying to maybe level that up a little bit. Even if I can get a couple of hits in here and there, I don't really mind if I do like one damage or anything as long as I get some skill level ups. Nice. Okay, no skill level up so far. <laughs> nice. Okay, get him. Yeah, I've got to be a bit careful about axes as well, because axes only deal damage when you hit the enemy with the actual head of the weapon, rather than swords, where it's kind of a, a bit more of a noob-friendly weapon. That's probably the reason why I tend to use them quite often. A two-handed sword is always going to deal some pretty decent damage. Anyway, oh, yeah, nice. Get some, get some good damage with this two-handed axe as well. I actually like the axe quite a bit but I do want to get something that is primarily two-handed rather than a hybrid weapon. And there we have it. And look at this, we lost another person. Was that ours? Yes, that was indeed ours. So we literally lost another Lord due to death. I am, oh, okay, this is, this is bad. But at the moment, I would like to increase trade more because in my opinion, this is going to be super, super good later down the line. And, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe some people haven't seen the trading gameplay and I'm going to be combining it with quite a lot of combat as well. So, you know, maybe it's going to be a little bit more dynamic in that aspect. So I'm going to go for another point in trade and another point in social just to try and increase its learning speed as much as we possibly can. Last seen at Sionan has been taken prisoner by Urgion. Okay, so I don't see him here. Do you? He's not here. He's not here as far as I can tell. Well, I suppose with the disappearance of Godun, what we're actually going to do is we're going to do the obligatory less talking, more raiding. So let's actually take a hostile action and uh, try to take these villagers out. Obviously, they're going to be providing a little bit of resistance for us, and that is hopefully going to help us to gain a little bit of extra experience here and there, more skill points for me, for my two-handed weapons, maybe for my one-handed as well. And uh, speaking of that, I really do need to make another axe, but I don't know whether there is actually a, um, a handle capable of just being a pure two-handed, but we're going to see if we can maybe make that work. I do need to get out my shield though, just in case I get shot in the face. <laughs> that is probably going to happen, let's face it, so let's be a little bit careful. Nice. All right. Good. Perfect. Nice. Okay. Come on now. Oh, some good damage here. Some good damage to be had. Try and kill the archers. Oh, that was a massacre. Oh, I like it. I like it. Yeah, so I, I got to say, I, I wasn't that big a fan of two-handed axes. I think this particular theme for the series is actually giving me a good excuse to use some of the rarer weapon types that I haven't actually used beforehand. So I'm pretty happy with that, actually. The Sturgeons have been taken prisoner. I've seen this multiple times. The overhaul mod or not, it makes no difference. The Sturgeons do seem to have a predisposition, shall we say, for some weird stuff to happen. Gonna end the raid right here. Gonna level up my forces.
And I suppose what I'll do is I'll actually recruit a couple of these prisoners as well, just so that we have more bodies for the incoming fight. Because apparently we're going to be fighting Aaron now because he's coming over here to try and prevent us from continuing our action. So let's see if we can deal with him, shall we? I'm looking forward to this, actually, because this is probably the first proper vassal battle that we've had. And I'm not entirely sure if he's going to be dangerous for us or not. What I have seemed to realize, though, is that the best possible course of action for Sturgia, at least as far as I have seen so far, is literally just charging. I know. It seems like a weird thing, no? Seems like a really, really weird thing to do, considering most of the time you probably want to be playing more defensively or whatever, especially considering most of the units are relatively lightly armored as well. But I have noticed that when they charge, they actually have much more success in their effectiveness. And I don't know why that would be, to be honest, considering they are indeed very much lightly armored in comparison to their imperial cousins for example you know because th those imperials they play much better when you are playing defensively because they have a lot of spearmen and i, I suppose that's actually answering my own question because they do have a lot of spearmen and i suppose spearmen are just inherently much more defensive in comparison to sturgeons which generally don't seem to use too many spears i don't think so at least i mean they have they do have spears as you can no doubt tell but they don't seem to really utilize them as much as the Imperials might. But maybe that's just me. I don't know. But look at that. That was a pretty decisive victory. We did end up losing 25 units, which is, of course, to be expected. I mean, you know, that was a, a pretty hefty enemy to um, take on right there. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to be nice in this one because we're not actually going to do that much persuading. To me, letting units go... That's not going to happen this time. We're going to be taking them prisoner. Oh, yes. We're going to be taking them prisoner. I don't really care that much about prisoners, but I will take them just for the sake of selling them for roguery skill. And there we go. That's basically it. I'm not going to try to persuade them to join us either, of course, because they are indeed Batanians. And the only time that I will try to persuade is when we are in a tight spot and we need to try and get... A couple of extra units just to help us out, like I did just before that fight. Ah, it seems as though Godun has now been ransomed from the Batanians. Okay, so thankfully he has now been freed. I have no idea why I wasn't able to see him in Sionan's garrison, but I guess it was just a... I don't know, maybe it's just a thing that they have implemented to make it so that you're, you're like, oh, okay, well, he's probably there, but you can't see him, so you can't really do anything about it, which is... Kind of a shame, to be honest, but oh well, never mind. I think that's probably going to be it for this episode. And next time, we're going to try and uh, strike at the Batanians a little bit more. I do need to start recruiting some noble units too, so I might decide to do a couple of tasks for the villages in my off-screen time. It's primarily going to be things like family feud, I suppose, and, um, you know, rescuing the daughter and, and so on and so forth. But if there's anything interesting that we haven't seen before, I will, of course, show you. Anyway, that will be it. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like if you so desire. But otherwise, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.